Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the Canon EOS R7 for bird photography, but we're going to do it quickly. I just released a two hour video on how to set this up for bird photography, and we went over everything, all the buttons, all the dials, the screen. We went through the menu system, the quick menu. I showed you how the autofocus system works with subject tracking on versus with subject tracking off. So very detailed video. This video is for someone who is experienced with the EOS R lineup, probably has an EOS R7, but maybe hasn't shot it in a couple months and just wants to see what the key settings are so you can go out birding with this later on today or tomorrow. That's the focus. Off we go. As always, let's do a semi-factory reset. But before we do that, let's make sure we are all in the manual mode here on the mode dial. Turn it to M. That's how I'll be. I shoot in manual. That's how we'll be setting this up. Let's go to the menu. Let's go to little camera. Let's go to five. Clear all custom functions. Okay, that's done. Let's go to the wrench. Let's go to number six. Reset camera. Basic settings. Okay, we just reset all the basic settings. Let's go back. We're not done. Go to the wrench. Number six, back to reset camera. Go to other settings. Customize quick controls. Got to reset that. Shooting display information. We can reset that. Communications, custom shooting, copyright. We don't have to reset. That has nothing to do with this video. Uh, customize controls. Yes, let's reset that. Customize functions, definitely need to reset that. And my menu, we can reset that as well. Great, we're all on the same page. Let's go to the next section. All right, guys, now let's make some key adjustments here. Let's go to the wrench. Let's go to number three. Let's go to power savings. Turn all of these power savings features off. The bird of your life flies in front of you. It's going to be there for two seconds. Your camera's asleep. It'll take two seconds to wake up. The bird is gone. You're really upset. Don't have this stuff on, in my opinion. doesn't make that much of a difference anyway. The battery is really good in this camera anyway. Uh, you can get two, th two to 3,000 still photos with this easily with one battery. So, and even more. I can go out all morning with one battery. So you don't need any of this stuff on. Okay, great. The other thing I want to do is go to autofocus. Let's go to number one. And subject tracking is the shiny star of this camera. But it is a monster. And we're going to set up the autofocus points here in a second. And I don't want it going wild on us. So let's just turn it off for right now. And we'll turn it back on later. Great. Okay, let's go to buttons and dials. What do we need to modify? The very first one, I'll put a picture of this up because it's kind of hard to turn this all the way around. First one to modify is the DOF button, depth of field preview button on the front. Remember, if you push that, it shows you the true depth of field. If you look at the snowy owl or if you look at the barn owl in the background, it's blurry. If I push this button, it shows you the true blurriness or the true depth of field of this camera or the true bokeh. With a 5.6 F number, it shouldn't be blown out. So anyway, let's set that to toggle between auto eye focus on, auto eye focus off. Really easy to do. Hit the menu button, go to little camera, go to number four, number three. How about customize buttons? And now let's use the main dial to scroll and find it. There it is. Now remember, don't be in this column. These settings are for the movie camera mode. We want to be in this column. This is for the stills or the picture taking mode. Let's go into that by tapping on it or you can hit the set button here. Right down here, the little eyeball, eye detection on, eye detection off. That's what we want. And now when I push the DOF button, eye detection off, eye detection on. Pretty cool. Eye detection doesn't make a huge difference. Not like some of the birding channels say. The magic is subject tracking. This one doesn't have that much effect on things. It's You'll see my other video if you watch that. All right, what's next? The shutter button in the front, that's stock settings. Half press will engage metering and it'll lock the autofocus on target. See, we got Mr. Bill there locked on. So whichever one of the eight different autofocus points you have called up as default, 
that one will lock on to the target, full press to take a picture. The AF on button does exactly the same thing, only it doesn't do anything except for meter and lock on autofocus as well. All right, the main dial is also the same. That'll control shutter speed. We're not gonna mess with that. But the one in the middle, this MFN button, the multi-function button, it's in a very nice ergonomic spot. So my finger can hit this. So I wanna put something I'm constantly manipulating and that is the autofocus points. I'm constantly switching between three, two or three different autofocus points. Stock out of the box, if I push that, it does bring up an autofocus point menu, but we have to scroll through it, and I explained all this in the other video, and then sometimes you might throw it off, you might hit this quick control dial, and it's just a mess. So let's set this up to toggle directly between the autofocus points. How do we do that? Go back to menu, customize buttons, Let's go find it. I think it's like six clicks. No, it's actually just two clicks. There it is. MFN. So let's go into that. And we want this setting right here. Direct AF area selection. A magical button. Watch what it does. Click OK. Now watch when I toggle between these. See how cool is that? One click just toggles right between them all. Now the problem is there's way too many. We only need three of these for this button, so let's fix that. Go to Menu, and we'll go to Autofocus. I believe it's number four, and there it is. Limit Autofocus Areas. We'll get rid of this spot. We'll set that up somewhere else. Um, so I like one-point autofocus, but if I'm going to use that, I want the helper points around it. See, all three of these are single autofocus boxes. And if I'm going to have it, I'm, I want the helper points. You're very rarely going to use those, but they work great. Let's keep zone one and zone two. Zone three I don't need. And this this entire screen is the autofocus box. Unless I'm shooting swallows, I don't ever use that one. Now watch what happens when I toggle between these. And you can see there's only three of them. Where else can you find these? Where's another place to find and look at these autofocus boxes? Without going into the menu. Good, quick menu. If we go into the quick menu and we go up to this top icon on the left here, we can toggle between them like this as well. Great. Okay, let's let's work on this this quick menu for a second. There's too much junk in here. I really only need the, the autofocus points and I need the drive mode here. Those are the only two things I need. So go to menu, go to big camera, number eight, Customize quick controls. Let's get rid of some of those. Edit layout. Give it a second to think. Great. And see all these that are ticked? We just need to untick them. So autofocus area, that's the same as autofocus point, a.k.a. Autofocus method, a.k.a. They're all the same. Autofocus box. That's what I like to call them. That all means the same thing. We don't need that. The drive mode we do need checked. We don't need any of these other ones. Let's just get rid of them. Clear that thing out. And of course, you can keep what you want here. But there's some other ones down here. Don't need any of those. Let's also rearrange it while I'm here. So I got these two selected, but they're going to be really far apart. Well, let me show you first. Settings, save and exit. Okay, so now if we look in the quick menu, see there's only those two. Cool. This one you can't get rid of because that gets you out of the quick menu hit the Q button that gets you into the quick menu. But let's put them closer together. They're kind of far apart. So let's go right back in here again. And you'll notice that there's an info button. If you hit the info button, you can rearrange these. So let's do that. Let's hit the info button. And let's go down and hit this one. And let's drag it up. Put them right next to each other. Hit the set button again. And hit save. Great, now let's look at them. See, they're side by side, so that's pretty cool. Great, got the quick menu under control. Uh, up here, no other buttons we need to mess with. Uh, the next one to mess with, again, all the ones that are in a nice ergonomic position, these are the ones where I want to put stuff that I'm using a lot. So this quick control dial right here, it's perfect for my thumb. So I want to put something that I change all the time. By default, it's set to change the aperture, the F number. You never change the F number on this when you're birding, right? You're always wide open. Or maybe stop down one if you have a really expensive lens. So that's a waste. 
Let's put ISO here. I'm constantly changing ISO. That's my number one most manipulated function is ISO. So let's put ISO right there. So now we just need to go back to little camera, customize dials, and we can use this cross key pad right here to go find it. And there it is already. Great. There's ISO. And note, you can put autofocus areas or autofocus points here so you can toggle between them by scrolling. That's an option, but I don't like that. ISO for me. Great. Now when I hit this, you can see the ISO changing nicely. And now that leads to the question, well, where are you going to change aperture? Change it here by tapping and moving it like this. Or even better, we can push down the star button and hold it. And that assigns the main dial to aperture. You can see the little half cog there has shifted over to the F number. So two places you can control that. Great. The only other thing we need to do here in the back is this AF on button. Because I'm missing, if I toggle through my autofocus points, I'm missing that really important spot autofocus. When the bird is in the bushes and you want a little tiny autofocus point, the only, that's the only thing that'll work. We, we have to have that. And so I'm going to set it up right here on the AF on button. So let's go modify that. Let's go to customize buttons. About six clicks, I think, or turns will get me there. And metering autofocus start is fine. Uh, but notice we have an info button here again. And that will give us a detailed menu. So hit the info button. And look at all these options we can assign to this button. It's metering and engaging autofocus. So we want to go to autofocus area. We want to go into that menu and go spot autofocus. Great. And then we want to go down, hit subject tracking, turn that monster off. I explained that in the last video. That is a monster, but it's amazing, but you can't have it on all the time because sometimes it just goes out of control, as I demonstrated in the last video. So we have to have a way to turn that off. And the, the on and off button does not work well. This is the only way to set this up, in my opinion. So great. Make sure those are checked or this is not going to work. And click set. Oops, click menu then. And OK to set. And great. And now, let's say I'm just having trouble locking on the snowy owl there. Or, or let's say I want to get on Mr. Bill. All I have to do is push my AF on button, and that will turn off subject tracking. All right, now we have another problem. If we look at our autofocus points, these boxes, these adjustable zones are not usable. So let's fix these. This is the beauty of this camera, right? We don't have this on the R5 or the R6 or the R. So to adjust this, this autofocus zone, we have to hit a combination of buttons. So you just have to memorize these. Let's hit the checkerboard button. The real name is autofocus point select button. It's too long. Let's just call it the checkerboard button. So hit checkerboard. MFN button, and now we have a choice to select between number one or number two. Let's do number one, and then quickly hit the checkerboard button again, and we have a new setup here. So we have the main dial has been reprogrammed to control the horizontal length of the box, and the quick control dial has been programmed or reprogrammed temporarily to control the vertical height of the box. And let's make this one about like this. Great. Click OK. And great. And we can toggle between these. And there's our new box. Let's do it again. How do you do it? Hit the checkerboard. Hit the MFN button. Let's go fix zone number two now, which is useless like that. Quickly hit the checkerboard button. Great. And now let's make this one more manageable. Let's make this a big one, though. And that's about usually how I set it for the eagles that are flying in or birds that are flying. Great. OK. Now we got our our autofocus points all set up. Everything looks great. Let's go inside the menu now. Okay, let's go right to big camera number one. And image quality, you want to set this for C-RAW, right? We explained this. C-RAW is about half the size as RAW. And I assume most of you are using Lightroom and want to be able to manipulate your photos. So JPEG will be off. I mean, if you do shoot JPEG, then you can obviously turn JPEG. Don't leave both of these on, though. The buffer is not strong enough to handle those. You'll fill it up too fast. So C-RAW it is. 
Nothing else here we need to worry about. Nothing there. Auto white balance is fine for going out. I mean, if you want to set it so all your images are the same, you could set it to Kelvin over here. 5200 is a great stock setting for that, so that's fine. Uh, color, if you want a little wider, color gamut, Adobe, RGB as you, is what I usually set it to. Picture style, not auto. And these only really affect JPEGs, but they do color your screen too. So you don't want your screen acting all strange and jumping over to different colors. I just put neutral there for that one. Number five, six, nothing. Big one right here. And by the way, raw mode and burst mode, as I explained, it's it's unusable in my opinion. And you can look at my other video to see why. Just not usable. Big Camera 7 is important because we have the Mode Brothers that live here. We have the Drive Mode. You can find that in the Quick Menu. But you got the Shutter Mode right here. This is the only place to find the Shutter Mode. So let's set the Shutter Mode right now. Stock out of the box, it's set to Electronic First Curtain. And that is my recommendation. You lose all the problems with Mechanical Shutter. There's no Delayed Shutter. There's no Shutter Shock. And you lose all the problems with electronic shutter. There's no rolling shutter and there's no banding. So it's a no-brainer. Electronic first curtain. I'll show you the problem with that. But to, to go along with electronic first curtain, you have to change the drive mode to high-speed continuous plus. That'll give you 15 frames per second. You are all set to go birding. But here's the problem. Listen how loud it is. It's pretty loud. So the eagles, it doesn't bother the eagles that I've been shooting the last couple months. But some smaller birds, it does scare them. So in that case, you have to go to electronic. So let's go to electronic. And in that case, you have to change the drive mode to high speed continuous, the second fastest speed. So that's still 15 frames per second. And it gives you a stock shutter noise. If you want it to be completely silent, I'll show you. But if you set it up like this, it'll minimize the banding and the rolling shutter. won't be as bad. It'll still be there on occasion. It's still a problem with this camera. Maybe I'll flash a picture of that ash-throated flycatcher that got mutilated by this. Uh, but anyway, so that's the settings. You won't have too much trouble set like that, 15 frames. If you want it to be completely silent, this big camera 7 is so important this menu. There's a silent shutter function. Just go into that and click on, and now it's completely silent. I'll show you another place to fix that as well. Fix this as well. Release shutter without card. Why would you want to take pictures without a card in here? I've went out all morning without a card in here one time, long time ago. And uh, yeah, so disable this. You don't want that on. Big camera 8. Really nothing we need to worry about here. Let's go to, oh, image review. Let's turn that off. That's going to, when you take a picture, it puts a picture, it puts the last picture in the frame for two seconds. And it can be annoying. If you want to see the last picture, you just hit this playhead button here. You remember how to blow it up? Hit the checkerboard button. You remember how to blow it up more? Just toggle the main dial here. You can drag it around or use the cross keypad to manipulate it. Anyway, I digress. Great. Uh, number nine here, we have an important one, display performance. You want to set that to smooth. If you're shooting birds in flight and looking through the viewfinder without this setting made, um, it'll stutter like an old 1920s movie. So this will smooth it out so it doesn't stutter as bad. And number 10, there's nothing we need to worry about. Let's go on to the autofocus menu. All right, AF operations definitely want to be in servo, right, by stock out of stock out of the box settings it's one shot and that's no good so with servo if you half press and hold it and the bird's on a perch and the bird shifts and moves backwards it'll keep refocusing as long as you're half pressing it's constantly refocusing in single shot when you half press and hold it focuses one time and that's it if the bird moves out of position it will not refocus unless you lift your finger off and then repress again so we don't want that setting on. AF areas, those are just the autofocus points again. We already know how to find them. Subject tracking, let's turn the monster back on. This is amazing. It tracks. It looks inside the autofocus box that you've selected. If it doesn't see a face uh, or a body or an eye, 
it'll go outside the box looking for it. And that's my only complaint with that. I talked about that in my other video a lot. So it's worth having it on, though. It's amazing. Uh, subject to detect, the, out of all the settings, this is the most important one to set. So this has to be set to animals. So according to Rudy Winston, the Canon technical support guru, the software engineers have programmed this to look for cats, dogs, and birds, not necessarily in that order. So feathers and fur is what they look for. They don't, on a face, they don't look for eyebrows like a person has. So if you have this accidentally set in people mode, your keeper rate's about 10% with regard to shooting birds, so you won't be happy. Eye detection doesn't matter. We just set that on the DOF button. Switch track subjects. I explained this in detail. You want to set that over to zero so it's a little stickier. So if our owl takes off and it flies behind and I'm half pressing and I'm shooting and it flies behind a little tree and comes out the other side, we want this to be stuck to the bird and not grab onto the tree. And that's what the stickiness is. It's the stickiness of the autofocus point. You don't want to make it too sticky because if the autofocus point is on a perch instead of the bird and the bird takes off and you try to go with the bird, it might not come off the perch very easily. So this works really good for that. Uh, if we go to the cases, I thoroughly explained this in the other video, auto is by far the best setting. Number three, nothing we need to do here. Number four, we already limited the autofocus points here, so we already did that. Nothing more we need to set. Number five, these are your manual focus settings. You should turn this on in case it's really early in the morning and your autofocus system is not working. You're going to need to have that on and your focus guide on. I explained and demonstrated this in the last video. Okay, so those settings are important. Let's go to number six, autofocus six. Nothing we need to worry about there. Great. The playhead, there's only one we need to change at number six. So go down to autofocus point display. You definitely want that enabled. So if I take a picture and we push the play button, it shows us the last picture we took. We can see the autofocus point was right on the eye. So that is awesome. So very, very useful feature there. That's the only one we worry about. Then we have connectivity. We don't worry about that. Uh, the wrench, we don't need anything in here. We've already talked about all the stuff in here. You might want to go down for the screen brightness and bump that up to number five, especially if it's a bright day. If it's a really bright day, maybe even six, because this is not the greatest LCD screen in the world. The viewfinder's okay. Number five, nothing we need to worry about there. Number six, we already reset the camera there. Great. Little camera, nothing we need here. Number two, we need to change this one. So same exposure for new aperture. So if you have a 100 to 500 or 100 to 400, you're shooting at 500 and then you have everything all set up and you decide that's too, too much reach and you back off to 400, You've, you've changed your exposure triangle. So you're going to have to go change your ISO and your shutter speed to compensate. You can let the camera do that for you right here. And I found that quite, quite useful when it works. It doesn't always work, but when it works, it's great. Because if you're, I mean, in the heat of the moment, you're going to not have time to do that. So that's a good setting. And we've been to customize buttons a lot. Nothing to do there. Nothing to do there. Star button, I recommend putting the shutter modes here because you're probably not going to remember Big Camera 7. So just let's go into that menu, click OK, and configure and select items to register. Click on that and go down and let's find shutter mode. And it's way down here somewhere. Be by dry. There's drive mode. There it is, shutter mode. Click OK. Click OK, register this tab, and that's it. It'll trick you into hitting OK again. You don't want to do that because then you'll put Release Shutter Without Card in the menu. I've done that before. So, OK, and you can see we have Shutter Mode. It's grayed out right now because we're in Silent Mode. That's why it's grayed out. But it'll work once you get out of Silent Mode.
All right, guys, that will do it. We've got everything set up for this. You're ready to go birdie now. If you have any questions or problems with anything, just leave them in the comments below and I'll get those answered for you. Please consider giving me a thumbs up and please consider subscribing. Really hard to get a new channel growing these days. So see you in the next video.